Sh- uh, shall we continue on to Sonic the Hedgehog? Let's do Is it. Is Robotnik a fascist? Speaking of fascism. <laughs> no, R- Robotnik is a democratic socialist. Oh. <laughs> when all are robots, all are equal. <laughs> I only overthrew King Acorn because I wanted to institute Medicare for all. <laughs> <laughs> robots don't need Medicare for all. <laughs> exactly. One <laughs> percent of the woodland creatures. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to One Stage at a Time, the podcast where we're playing three video games one stage at a time, every single level, not skipping a single level. Right now, we are playing Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Game Gear, that a hidden gem. Uh, and we are approaching the end game. We're at Sky Base Zone, Act One. I am Aaron Neeson, and I'm joined by my co host, as always, Andy Prim. Welcome, Andy. Hello. 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 And we are joined by one Jared Vandergriff. Howdy Hi, Jared. Do. Hello. How do you and do? How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> and Ed Torado, Ed, welcome. Hello. Good chance to respond. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm. <laughs> Guys, it's late at night, and we just we are now we are still talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. How do how do we all feel about that? It's great. I love it. I'm having fun. So good. Three more times. This is one with well, this level. <laughs> there it is. Two, three. That's all that we have left in Sonic the Hedgehog. We're in the end game now. And Aaron, what is the word for third to last? Enter pasta penultimate. Not pasta penultimate. <laughs> you almost fucked it up, but you got it. That was a end. joke. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> Enter penultimate. <laughs> and this is the antepenultimate stage of this game. Sky Base Zone Act One. Let's jump right into it, boys. Let's uh, do it. We're, we're on the map screen here. We're like in these dark clouds up above uh, Eggman land. Um, we've gotten through Scrap Brain. Eggman escaped um, in, onto his, uh, it's like a Zeppelin type thing. In fact, in the Master System version, I think on the map you actually see a Zeppelin pop up on the map here, which is pretty cool. Um, I was expecting any- that because you, you read at the very beginning of this whole journey, you read from the, the instruction booklet, I think, and it said like, and you'll, they'll have the final battle with Robotnik in his, in his base on a, a flying Zeppelin in the air or something like that. And then there wasn't yeah. one on the map. And I was like, where is it? Where's the Zeppelin at? Where's the dang Zeppelin? <laughs> I was promised a dang Zeppelin. <laughs> Give him my rootin' tootin' Zeppelin. <laughs> Well, uh, we're we're gonna get to that zeppelin right now because uh, well, let me let me pull up the master system version here for us. We can look at all that glorious resolution. Um, <laughs> take a look at this zeppelin um, as this promised. Is, this is Gotham all over again. Did you guys watch Gotham? Oh, maybe it's. Uh, I just got, I just wanted to see some dang police blimps, and they never gave me dang police blimps. They had them in like <laughs> some of the promos, and they never were in the show. There it is. Look at that beautiful Zeppelin. Okay, apparently you see it. You see it at the beginning of Act Two, but not at the beginning of Act One, which is interesting oh. because you're, in, in, you don't. We're well, not actually on a Zeppelin in Act One here. Um, we're we're on like some scaffolding and like some industrial type platforms. Um, you're climbing. At the yeah, we're climbing, and then at the very end of this stage, we do uh, board the Zeppelin, and that is kind of like. Uh, again, some visual storytelling leading into Act Two of Sky Base Zone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so we could still see a Zeppelin in in the Game Gear version. We could Keep still see a Zeppelin, Zeppelin in the Game Gear version. I'm, yes. Okay, my hopes are back up. <laughs> so, uh, one thing that jumps out at me right off the bat here. This is basically Starlight Zone with with a little bit of extra stuff thrown in there, but a lot of the textures and enemies really remind me of Starlight Zone. Okay, yeah, I see it. I see it. Uh, yeah, if there's if there's a Sonic One analogy or a analog level, this that's definitely it. Uh, yeah, but for me, uh, it made me think of a more recent game, which is Sonic Mania, because uh, when you're playing through. Uh, flying battery zone underneath flying battery zone you get all of these electrical uh electrical coils and currents that will send shocks through that will zap you if you're if you're not careful uh and it really made me think of that but yeah no i totally see starlight zone absolutely 
Yeah, it's like uh, these these little nodes um, that uh, they they're off, but then they'll turn on at different points, and lightning will like arc and connect between them, kind of forming barriers that you have to avoid. And like Aaron said, uh, very similar to the obstacles that are seen in uh, the new version of Flying Battery Zone from uh, Sonic Mania. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huge pain in the ass in this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, can't, you can't destroy them permanently, unlike Sonic Mania. Yeah, this, uh, this level for, for me was possibly the hardest one yet. Like, it was definitely the most frustrating one yet. Like, I had, I had trouble with this one for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. It really shouldn't have given me as much trouble as it did, but I definitely died, died quite a few times. Ed, as our, uh, as our resident Sonic expert, um, definitely the best player of Sonic games that I personally know, what did you think of this stage and its relative difficulty? I was, it was super play. easy. I did it on the first try. Um, <laughs> and, and found the Emerald, which is definitely in there. No, it was not. This is a hard level. <laughs> Although, like, Here. you guys compare it to other Sonic levels, and I really got kind of a Mega Man feel from it. And also, Okay, yeah. Like, yeah, level. yeah, I can see that. Definitely. Mario okay. Too. Mega Man levels are a huge pain in the ass for me, too. So, yeah, that tracks. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's <laughs> kind of like, like, uh, like an Airman stage or something like that, where you're up in the clouds, and there's lots of bottomless pits to fall into. And those zappers, they wouldn't be so bad, except they bounce you when you lose. Like, if you have your shield, they bounce you. Like, I had a shield going into this. They bounce you, and then they hit you again. Bastards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was some you extra. Get, you don't get any invincibility frames when you get mm -mm. hit by those. Mm -mm. Not at all. Sonic, the first generation of Sonic games, like this one in Sonic 1, how, like, if you land on spikes... You don't. You get no invincibility afterwards, and you bounce yeah. onto other spikes. You're dead. Like they were real. They were hardcore about that stuff. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Invincibility frames. What's that? If you bounced off spikes and landed on spikes, you die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess that makes sense. Uh, we've also got. Uh, speaking of Starlight Zone, we've got the Orbinauts. Uh, mm -hmm. We've also got these little explodey guys, like those little walking robots that'll stop and then flicker and then explode. Uh, maybe the most annoying and hardest enemy to avoid in, in the whole Sonic Pantheon. Uh huh. And there's one part in this level where it was just monstrously frustrating. Like, because you, you pass one of the bombs and you get on a moving platform, and that bomb will still explode and will still hit you on the platform. And that happened to me several times. I was so angry. <laughs> I found the uh, the draw distance pretty challenging in this level, just because there's there's so much going on that you can you can easily miss a projectile or like even one of those lightning lightning things uh, just off screen and just run right into it without seeing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. Uh, uh, this is one of the maybe worst offenders as far as like screen crunch goes. Um, between like you compare this to the master system version and it's night and day you can see so much in the master system version compared to the game gear version yeah i mean that i mean that honestly is probably what caused the most frustration like i mentioned the bomb just a minute ago if i could still see the bomb there i wouldn't forget it was there and see all <laughs> those explosions coming at me definitely but yeah oh boy but oh, I, on the boy. whole though i dug the atmosphere though like i like the the setup of this level and the feel of it and everything uh the music not so much but i dug the atmosphere i thought it was cool isn't it just the same music from from the previous level yeah it is yeah it's it, yeah yeah they, they just reused the scrap brain soundtrack that's yeah, too bad yeah i wish they'd use different music it is a bummer yeah. is I, I, I like that track version uh, I bl uh, that's a good question, Ed. I, I assume it, it that it is, but I guess I'm not sure. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, we can listen to it right now and find out. <laughs> uh, one, one little, it, it's such a minor thing that I, I hesitate to even mention it, but I really like that the rings are in shadow in this level. Uh, they're like darker colored and you know like everything else uh is also in shadow because i guess it's nighttime um 
I don't know. I thought that was a cool little detail. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I like that contributes to the whole atmosphere. Mm-hmm. It's, no, yeah, very cool. That's yeah, it's a good touch. Good, my good mention. Oh boy, we're gonna hear it. We're gonna hear it. It's coming. All right, I don't know if you guys could hear that or not, but it is indeed the same track. <laughs> not not bad on its own, as is, but, you know, the fact that it's just the same. Pretty lame. Pretty lame, guys. Sonic well, is cool. I didn't know if, I don't know if they know that, but Sonic's supposed to be cool, and that was lame. <laughs> not cool, man. <laughs> I, I will give uh, shout outs to Yuzo Koshiro, composer of this game. It is a good track, and it's probably not his fault. They probably had like limitation issues. Yeah, 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 no. If I had designed Sonic for the Game Gear, I would have had an original track. <laughs> Robotnik. <laughs> I bet Robotnik, Robotnik could make some bitch ass video games. Well, yeah, man, he's uh, he's, he's living it. He's, he's making him a reality is what he's doing. <laughs> all right. We're getting ahead of just, ourselves. I'll be egg themed <laughs> though. <laughs> we, we almost uh, watched a recording of uh, act two there, um, but we did discover that the Zeppelin does appear um, on the screen after you finish act one, uh, regardless of if it's the game gear version or the master system version. So that's another little bit of visual storytelling there for you folks. Um, once Sonic actually physically boards the Zeppelin, that's when we see it appear on the map screen um, for for the final, you know, final two acts of the game, I suppose. No teasing a la uh, Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, yeah. We're Only when you Plank get Gallion there do you get to see getting it. getting closer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, here it's just like it's there. It's, there it's not. That's it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh what do you guys think? Was uh, this was a difficult level, but was it an appropriate difficulty? Yeah, I mean it's the last it's the last zone, so it should be hard. Like I don't know if this was like I don't know if this was the right kind of hard though. Like there's challenging hard and there's just pain in your ass hard. You know, uh, like this gave me no sense of satisfaction when I beat it. Uh, so uh, you know, it should be hard. It should be hard, but this wasn't like challenging fun rewarding hard you know it was just like fuck you fuck you hard (laughs) uh i think it's interesting that the previous couple levels are well uh more or less rewarding of exploration but in this one it really just incentivizes you to get through it um or at least for me like i didn't bother exploring any of the branching paths i was just like i'm gonna survive this and get to the end of it and then probably not play this level again <laughs> it's also too scary to explore it's so scary <laughs> it's too spooky i'm too spooked <laughs> uh there is no chaos emerald in this level we should say um there are like a few one-ups and things like that uh hidden you know if you care to like explore like down or up you know uh, through different like precarious platforms Um, there's like these platforms with propellers on them that like you ride on slowly forward and you have to like jump from one to another. So there's some tricky platforming going on here, but there are a few secrets if you care to find them. Just, just not a chaos emerald. There is one final chaos emerald, which we may or may not discover in the next level. (laughs) Maybe it's there. Maybe it's not. I'll never tell. I'll never tell. (laughs) Okay. Well, uh, that's that'll about do it for that stage. It's short and sweet, like most of the levels in this game. Well, short anyway. I don't know about sweet, but uh, I, I, fellas, what do you say we talk about a little bit of current events in in the wider Sonic expanded universe? Um, this news is like a little bit um, dated by this point. It's you know maybe a month or two old. But have you guys heard of uh, an upcoming project from? Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima, the creators of Sonic, called Balan Wonderworld. No. no. It's a great hat, though. <laughs> it is. It's, as, it's, as we'll soon find out, the whole thing is about hats. <laughs> so this is an upcoming project. Um, Naoto Oshima and Yuji Naka, uh, together again for the first time in quite a while, 
Um, they're working on an original game. Um, they've started, they've formed a company, they're making a game together, uh, and it is called Balan Wonder World. Um, it's uh, like it's partially Sonic inspired, partially Nights into Dreams inspired, which both <laughs> of them also worked on as well. Um, and both of them are no longer at Sega and haven't been for many years. <laughs> in, in fact, I don't think any of the original team is at Sega anymore. Um, which might explain a little bit about the current state of Sonic. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the boys are back in town, and they're working on Balan Wonderworld. Uh, and apparently the concept here is like, uh, it's all about hats, I think. Like, there's like this wacky creature with like eyes on his hat. <laughs> and it's like these kids who can transform into like different, um, different like costumes that have different abilities depending on like what hat they wear, I think, or, or possibly it's just like a costume and not a hat at all. I don't know. But anyway, th- we're, we're seeing some footage now of Balan Wonder World and some of these different costumes you can put on. Fellas, w- what do you think of this madness? Um, It feels so- like, I don't I mean, first impressions, just like I, li- I like the sort of art stylish i guess it is very reminiscent of knights but uh it feels kind of also that they're like sort of ripping off mario a little bit like we just had mario odyssey which had hats and powers and eyes on the hats and also that big top hat with the eyeballs uh, makes me think of that creepy uh, circus conductor guy from mario party like <laughs> yes yeah from mario party <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes yes I, his name is ballyhoo and that's exactly who i thought of as well ballyhoo is is bal like something to do with hats or something like what is that oh yeah because Bal in Balan wonder world ballyhoo yeah, now it's just like Blat- blatant copyright violation <laughs> yeah this sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen <laughs> well ed um I, I i once played uh some or most of nights into dreams at your place because you're the only person i know that actually owned a copy of that game uh but um you, you're a fan of the knights franchise right or well i guess there's only one I'm, game in the franchise of, there, there were two games i'm a fan of the first one i, I didn't like the second one that much um, but this, I do, I like love the first Nights game, and then this has given me Nights vibes. So if it's anything even kind of like it, I'm in, like hundred percent in. Okay, so you're you're getting the right vibes early on here. You're maybe uh, cautiously optimistic. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Even though, even though this for the series nights, you're fifty fifty on it. <laughs> well, so Yuji Naka, I don't think he had anything to do with the second one. Okay, so you're a Yuji Naka fan. Yeah, you're well, a Naka head. I'm trying to think of ways he makes so Sonic Knights and there was that that Xbox game with the cat, but I didn't play that one. What's the Xbox game that he made? Uh, like Blinks or something like that. Um, Blinks the Time Sweeper. Yeah, I think that was him, right? Oh, shit. I didn't realize that was Yuji Naka. Let me, let me, let me make sure. Not- <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to mislead our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> no, so this that's is, cool, though. This is a platforming game with different powers and a little cute, little, cute, little, little chibi animal things. Yeah, and you mentioned Mario. I actually thought more of like a hat in time. Um, when I saw the trailer for this, because yeah, that sure. game, cause in Mario Odyssey, you're changing costumes, but the costumes don't affect uh, Mario's abilities at all. Although mm-hmm. you do obtain other kinds of power ups, right. but uh, in, uh, in uh, a hat in time, you do put on different hats and they do give you different powers and they change your appearance. So it made me think of that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I could see that. I haven't played a hat in time though. I've, I know of it though. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. People I don't on know. The internet are gaga for that game. They will fight you <laughs> over it. <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. Everything's just a remix of things that have already mm-hmm. come before. So, you know, well, we'll, we'll, we'll play it. When, when's this? When's this? When's this uh, abomination coming out? Uh, that remains to be seen. I mean, I think it's one of these games where, like, it's kind of being done independently, and uh, there may even be like some crowdsourcing involved. Um, but, uh, it's 
I, I would suspect there'll be delays. So I would guess probably maybe late 2021 we're looking at, possibly even 2022 would be my guess. I mm-hmm. think that they probably have a more ambitious deadline than that. I mean, uh, but yeah, I, I would be surprised if it came out on time, just <laughs> given the state of modern games development. Yeah. Yeah. What company? Like, is, is it it's, all Kickstarter? Just these guys hanging out together, making a game or is it, is it? So it's an, it's an original company. Um, okay. I think it's called like Balan Incorporated or Balan Company or some shit like that. Uh, I don't know if they have a publisher or if they'll find a bigger publisher. Um, you know, that might happen, but uh, who knows? I mean, the games development is so weird. You know, you get like a, a little developer that makes a game and sometimes they can push it out themselves, but sometimes they need like Atlas or Sega or, you know, Namco or some other big company to pick it up and actually distribute it. Mm-hmm. So uh, maybe that'll happen like later on. I, it seems like it's pretty early in development. They've showed some gameplay, but I get the sense that it's still pretty early. Oh, Square uh, Enix. Square Enix, okay. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that answers that question. <laughs> and the Balan Company. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I did look up uh, links. It's not Yuji Naka, but it is um, Oshima Oshima. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, I think we've mentioned this before, but uh, Oshima was the artist and character designer who drew Sonic originally, and Naka was the programmer. But he, Yuji Naka later became kind of like the producer and, and sort of like the head of Sonic Team. So he started as the programmer, but he kind of became like the driving force between the, behind the whole franchise. Game looks cool. Game looks cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see more of it. And I'm going to go properly watch some info on it after this. <laughs> so for... <laughs> Yeah, I like uh, like all the different worlds look interesting. There's like a chess world. There's like a nighttime world with like a train driving around. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw a whale just flying around in there somewhere. Some yeah, the costumes look pretty interesting too. I, I I think there was a fire hydrant one that I saw. <laughs> I can't wait to play as fire hydrant. <laughs> all these years i've been waiting for a fire hydrant to play as <laughs> every day you're walking down the street just sighing at a fire hydrant just like, oh to be to be you for a day <laughs> if only a dog would piss on me <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that that sums up 2020 pretty well yeah pretty much <laughs> Yeah, I'm liking some of these boss characters we're seeing. They look really wild and cartoony. Um, uh, yeah, there was a giant flaming fire hydrant boss, Jared. Maybe you can put on the dog costume and piss on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a looks like a platformer. You know, I, mm-hmm. I do love a good 3D platformer, so I, I'm definitely intrigued by this premise. Yeah, I can't. <sighs> I'm trying to think of the last 3D platformer I even played. Like, was it Mario Odyssey? Maybe it's been a, like it's, and that was a while ago. It's been a while since I played a proper 3D. But I mean, no, it's like the, what am I thinking? I played through the Sonic Adventure games just a little while ago, and that was oh a, yeah, that was a real suck fest. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you played and Sonic not the good Forces. suck fest either. <laughs> Did, you played Sonic Forces a little bit before that too. Before you? that, I played through Sonic Forces too, and that was not. Wh- that also well, was, yeah. It was, what did you like better, Forces or the Adventure Games? Uh, honestly, probably... F- I'm going to have to say I liked Forces more. Like, at, least they, at least they kept the momentum going in Forces. Like, there were parts that sucked and you clipped through the levels, but you did that in Adventure too, and then you had to play as big the fucking cat. <laughs> it's, Where's Froggy? And you had to play through all those stupid, like, so, tails and robotnik in the giant mech levels that just aren't fun and like it yeah i think i honestly liked forces better you know it, for as shitty as it is and people have all these rose colored glasses about the adventure games but they are all shit and, <laughs> and it forces forces Ed, at least kept things moving forward some uh, Ed, what do you what do you think of that assessment that the adventure games are shit i mean they didn't age well with the shit now but at the time they were a pretty big deal 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that. And yet, as as I've maintained several times, they still remain among the better of the Sonic 3D games. Which says more about the modern Sonic 3D games than it does about the adventure games. I see people raving about Unleashed these days online. Like, Unleashed is, Unleashed is actually one of the best ones. Da, da, da. You know, everybody's got their own opinion. But I, I mean, everybody, I, I, every game has its apologists. So That's true. <laughs> that's I very true. Unleashed, I do love half of them. I love the Sonic parts of Unleashed. And I yes. hate the Werehog parts of Unleashed. Yeah, I, I completely agree. <laughs> they, they should do like a fan edit of Unleashed that completely removes all the Werehog segments and then it would be a great game. <laughs> can I tell you guys, before, before we wrap up here, can I share with you guys why I, I have lately felt like a bad father? Please. <laughs> so uh, I've recently introduced my daughter to like proper video games. She had played some like iPad games before, like, you know, like Nickelodeon Junior games where you move the car back and forth so it doesn't crash into the bird or whatever and so i recently have gotten her to play some sonic and um i feel bad because my kid uh like is now like very familiar with supersonic and i feel like i've failed because i have not made her earn supersonic (laughs) as a child (laughs) i didn't get supersonic for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there was many hours of sweat and tears into getting supersonic. And my little girl's just like, be supersonic. And I'm like, all right, give me two seconds. Let me get some rings. And then I turn to supersonic, he's zipping all over the place. And she's just like, yeah, I love supersonic. I'm like, me too. And it's just now struck me like I'm failing her. <laughs> like, yeah, she, 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 I, she, should, she should have to earn supersonic. God damn it. <laughs> I, I need to... Okay. Like, I'm pretty sure the first time I got supersonic was the cheat code. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but look how you turned out. That's true. That's I don't true. want I, my I, my daughter deserves better. <laughs> yeah, you have to instill in her a sense of accomplishment. Yeah, or at least make her go find the cheat codes. There's <laughs> there's something to be said for finding those on your own. Don't you back then, man? I was looking at a magazine and shit. Yeah. <laughs> My little nephew was really into supersonic. Like when he was like six or so, he had like a supersonic plushie and he always wanted to play with it with me and have me do the sonic voice and be like, yeah, it's me, supersonic. <laughs> And then he would like uh, get me to play Sonic 3 and Knuckles and get Supersonic. Um, but, you know, I'm not that good at that game, so I would die a lot. And he would be like, you know, shaking me and like yelling like, you got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> and I'd be like, you're really not helping. You're stressing me out. I can't I can't perform under this pressure. <laughs> it's funny. I got sad. My, I got the Sonic and Tails plushie that my kid sleeps. They were mine from my childhood. And now my kid sleeps with them. And she makes, Aww. she's making me do the voices of them today and stuff. And I was like, yeah, all right, here we go. <laughs> You're doing your best Jaleel White impression. Pretty much. I don't, I can't, you know, I we could do John Ralph. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Basically, I'm homeless. That's, that's what I was going for. <laughs> But, uh, All right. Yeah. Well, uh, fellas, on that note of uh, Aaron's uh, wonderful parenting skills, what do you say we wrap this episode up? Um, we, I think have we did it. two more episodes of this series. Uh, we'll be joining you real soon for Act Two of uh, Sky Base Zone, and there's only one more after that. And then, thank God, we can finally stop playing this game. Uh, but <laughs> it's uh, not that bad. It has not been that bad. <laughs> uh, I, you know what? I I am ready to be done with it. In fact, I'd be fine if we just stopped right here and didn't play those last two levels. What? No, no, no. We're not skipping a level. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it looks like I'm being dragged, uh, kicking and screaming to the final two stages of this game. Um, Ed, Jared, thanks once more for joining us. Um, We'll be back in about a week's time with the next episode of the series, um, uh, assuming I don't kill myself before then. Uh, Aaron, what do you want to say to the fine folks at home before we wrap up today? 
I want to say thank you, everybody, for listening. We appreciate it. Uh, give us a like, give us a follow, give us a, a share. Uh, thank you, Jared and Ed, for being here once again. We really appreciate it. Go to onestageatatime.com for all of our things and follow us on all of our socials. And we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Gentlemen, uh, whoever says the catchphrase, whoever says our sign-off first gets, gets a big sweaty hug from me. Same as Dave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Save and continue, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>